now to this new biosecurity measure in being operational at Queensland's international terminals as soon as today as a safeguard against the incursion of foot and mouth disease. For a closer look at the government's response to foot and mouth, among other things, I spoke a short time ago to the Nationals leader, David Littleproud, where I began by asking him about the new government's plans to improve the culture of the parliament. It took them four weeks to get to that juncture after they said it was absolute crap. When I put the idea of foot mats up four weeks ago, after getting a briefing from the department, being able to make that determination on my, by myself, you sit there, what is the minister actually doing? He's, he's actually let tens of thousands of people waltz through uh, these borders and, and open us up to the exposure and risk. We've said that there's also more measures they can take. We think there's 3D X-ray technology that we put in place in postal services that uses artificial intelligence that now should be implemented in Indonesia. We're looking to do it with New Zealand. We should pivot there so our biosecurity officers know what's in bags before they get here. But why haven't we banned any, any passenger carrying food product? You just ban anyone from Indonesia coming into this country holding any food product whatsoever. New Zealand's, bit, you, New Zealand's already done it. And sure. this mob is still sitting there. They've created chaos at the border. There's actually indecision. So you don't want the border shut, but you're saying for those who are coming in from Indonesia, no food products whatsoever. Well, that's the first step. And then the next step after that is for them to explain the science as to what is that threshold question around where there needs to be tougher border measures. Because at the moment, they're not being transparent with the science. And they need to be transparent, not just to us, but to Indonesia. Indonesia. They're a good trading partner and there's junctures in that under WTA rules that you would have to invoke. When the Chief Veterinary Officer said to me last Thursday that this is not contained, that the curve is going upwards, not downwards, uh, and then you've got the Minister only yesterday coming out saying Indonesia's got it contained, there is just so much mixed messages because the Minister is, has not got his eye on the ball. But there are mixed messages as well from the, the opposition, some saying shut the border, like the opposition leader, others saying don't, like yourself. Well, well we're saying, and, and so too is the opposition leader, that we, unless the the government comes forward and, and demonstrates what that threshold uh, is and have we already crossed it. I've got to say, on Thursday, when I got that briefing from the Chief Veterinary Officer, I, I thought we might have crossed that precipice. And that's what makes me concerned is that they haven't uh, come out and explained the science and the department won't explain the science to us because we're the opposition. And I, and I respect that. But it's important that the government explains it to, to Australia. The Farmers Fed... The Farmers Federation don't want the border shut. Well, well this, that's their opinion, and, and I respect that, but it's wrong. I mean, they, they just think that if we shut the border, that Indonesia will retaliate. Well, it depends how you, how you treat Indonesia, how you actually embrace them. We've got people on the ground there. And if we're transparent with them and say, if the curve gets to this juncture, that is the threshold that will be crossed. I think, I think their point is, though, it's more of a risk from cargo imports... The live, the live virus as opposed to travellers from Bali or so on. And, and again, it's around the measures you can put in place here. So the exposure and the risks are, are one through food product being brought in, which is why we're saying, why haven't you just banned anyone from Indonesia carrying any food whatsoever? Because New Zealand did. Uh, Ardun actually did it. God help us. And Murray Watt's still dithering. Uh, there's also the foot mats where they get rid of the, the bottom of, of, of people's feet. But this is the, the juncture is you can have greater control over the, the people if you have those measures in place. If you don't, cargo, you, it's, a, it's an object that's stationary. You can actually take your time to go through that. And there are measures in place there. But when you've got free movement of people running around, you don't have the, the controls that you do with respect to a container. So that's while there is a, a significant risk with our containers, uh, understanding is we control it, we control its movement. We can't control the movement of people unless we know what they're carrying and what they're doing. A lot of nursing homes in, in the bush, in regional areas, as you said, you're the conscience of, uh, of the bush, uh, they're struggling in terms of the nursing home staff. And we, we talk about the whole aged care sector, but I know in the regions it is also under a great deal of pressure. Will the opposition support the government's aged care bill, which includes ensuring nurses are in place 24 hours a day? Hey, we're going to support the bill. Uh, I think what it'll come down to is the practical application of this. They've got 12 months, 12 months to get a nurse in every aged care facility across the country. That was an election promise that Anthony Albanese went out there and promised the, the Australian people and was elected on. Uh, they've got to get their skates on. Uh, we're, we're happy to support the bill, but the, it'll be the practical application. This is, this is the most important aspect of it. But you won't support the, the climate bill, which is the commitment to reduce emissions by 43% by 2030. Are you worried about a potential backlash from, from coalition voters here? Because we saw what happened in, in 
May at the election. We believe in reducing emissions. There's no, no, no issues around that. The Nationals believe uh, in, in reducing emissions. It's just how we do it. And we don't believe that you need the big hand of government to tell you how to do it. We've met Kyoto and Paris not by government having to legislate, but by creating the environment and infrastructure around them. Australians do the right thing. You don't need to be told to do it. But what they're going to legislate is, is effectively a tax with the safeguards mechanism. And if you think your petrol's dear now, wait until the last two oil refiners in this country are imposed with the safeguard mechanism, your petrol price is gonna go up. But the cost of living pressure is already there and they're gonna to add to it by putting this tax on them by legislating. You don't need to legislate. Australians do the right thing. We believe in reducing- They say for industry investment certainty, so that there's certainty around investment, that's why they've got to put this in place. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, this is just a political stunt and it's going to come back to bite them because you're going to put in place that the safeguards mechanism is going to put a tax. You're also going to weaponise this piece of legislation by activists uh, that'll use it for even wanting to build a road. Uh, they'll be able to take this to court and, act and actively use this as a weapon against development of this country. We're a sensible country. We don't need to be told what to do. We don't need big government. We just need to get the hell out of their life but create that environment. You send those investment mm. signals if you put that environment and infrastructure around Australians and that investment confidence will be there, whether it be small-scale modular nuclear, whether yeah. it be hydrogen. Finally, the, the manly kerfuffle around the sea eagles. Seven players won't play on Thursday, boycotting the match due to the, the rainbow jersey meant to represent inclusion and their support of inclusion in that club. Is this a case of good intentions blowing up because of a lack of consultation? Yeah, well, I think uh, the coach, uh, Des Hasler, has come out and, and apologised for the way that Manly's handled it. I think uh, there's a lesson there for them to learn, uh, respect the views of, of all Australians, uh, so long as they do it respectfully. Uh, but Manly's obviously put their hand up and said they, they haven't handled this well and they should obviously rectify it, and they will. Nationals leader David Littleproud, as always, thanks. Appreciate your time. Anytime, mate.